our Bible class tonight. Our lesson now is, um, we're sticking with our series of prayer. So we're going to just talk about prayer for the next few weeks um, until the church doors open back up for regular Bible class. We're going to talk about prayer. So with that being said, let us pray. Father God, I come to you right now, God, saying thank you, oh Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for blessing us and keeping us throughout the day. Lord, we thank you for everything that's taking place on this day, oh God. We thank you for our 12 new Bible class. And Lord, we thank you for this evening's Bible class. Now, Lord, I ask that you will open our hearts that we may receive a lesson tonight on prayer or how to be better connected with you, oh God. Lord, I thank you for hearing my prayer. These and all things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Tonight, we're going to talk about prayer. Um, I am interested, however, to know who actually took me up on the challenge last week. Of course, I won't know because um, I'm here by myself, but uh, if you actually took me up on the challenge, put in the comment box, I did. Um, and the challenge was simply to get an assignment. What do I mean by that? Just get, pick somebody and pray for them. Uh, no conversation needed. You don't need to be in their business. You don't need to know what's going on with them necessarily. Just pray for them and um, watch and see what God does in their life. Kind of sit back and wait to hear their testimony about what God has done in their life or whatever it may be, healing, uh, financial peace, whatever they may be lacking in their lives. Um, you just, you're just, you just been praying for them so you don't know everything that's going on with them, but you'll, you'll be able to sit back and watch God work on their behalf. And as a result, remember I told you, when we pray for others and we take the time to be selfless and pray for others, God blesses us and takes care of our business. So if you did the challenge, um, thank God that you tried it out. And if you have it, it's still opportunity to, to do this challenge forever. You know, we can always pray for someone else. The other part of the challenge was I shared with you what Bishop Vaughn, Coletta Vaughn, shared with us back in November of last year. She said to us, and I'm going to offer this every week, she said to us, she said, if I could offer you one thing that would change your life forever, would you take it? And of course, we all said yes, and she simply offered us prayer. And I've been encouraged and inspired by that ever since. And so I want to talk about prayer last week, and I want to continue on with it this week. But um, what one of the things I find is that a lot of people, you know, when you have big gatherings at church, and you may say, uh, would someone like to pray? A lot of people get afraid and nervous and intimidated to pray. I was one of those people for a very long time. I didn't want to pray out loud in front of other people. And so I started, as I've grown, I'm noticing why. Sometimes it was the pure intimidation of listening to other people pray and thinking that I had to pray the way that they pray, that I have to use the words that they use, or um, people are going to laugh at me or they're going to think my prayer was not effective because I didn't do it the way I heard others do it. So that kept me in a shell for years with praying out loud until I realized that it's just a conversation with God. You know, and so tonight I just want to simply talk about um, pray with simplicity, pray with simplicity, and then once you develop a simple prayer life, everything else will come in, come in, and the the um, formalities and different things or whatever uh, the way we see other people pray, we feel necessary to start praying like that, or as we grow and as we're led, God will give us. A stronger uh, way of praying but right now if you're struggling with, with just simply praying out loud or simply praying to yourself at home I'm going to give you um, what helped me scripture wise it's not personal um, so anything that I share with you all is what I'm learning from the Word of God and through personal experiences but ultimately everything that we talk about will be based upon what I found in the Word of God so, um, I wanted to read Matthew chapter uh, 6, and I'm going to start at verse 5, and I'm reading from the Message Bible. And it says, pray with simplicity, and when you come, and when, I'm sorry, and when you come before God, don't turn 
that into a theatrical production. All these people, all these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for stardom. Do you think God sits in a box seat? It says, here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and as honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense his grace. Now, it says when you come before God, don't turn it into a theatrical production either. Now, let me clarify. Those who have are deemed or are considered prayer warriors, um, they, they have a powerful way of praying. They have a, it's just, it's amazing how God uses them through prayer. Okay, so I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the excited, excitable prayer. That's not what I'm saying. But when you come before God, you don't have to personally make it a theatrical production. Remember, the communication is from you to God, right? And so it says, all these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for starting. Do you think God sits in a box seat? You, when you're communicating with God, First of all, we know that God is everywhere at the same time, right? So he's listening to you. You don't have to. God knows you. He knows your heart. He knows what you need. He knows everything about us before we pray. So the prayer is the communication between us and God. And when you keep that in mind, you won't have to worry about putting on a show for others, right? You have to stay focused on what the purpose of, of the prayer is, period. It's me communicating with God. It's you communicating with God. He does not need all of the extras when praying. Of course, God, he, we need to always give him prayers of adoration and um, um, things of that nature. But when you're communicating with God, you don't have to put on this big production. So if you're feeling fearful or nervous about praying before other, in front of others, remember, you're just talking to God. Okay? Then it says, here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet secluded place so that you won't be tempted to role play before God. Remember, we talked about creating an altar um, at home. Um, you know, we always speak on the altars at our, at our churches and stuff like that. Get you a quiet place at home that's just your place where you go and you communicate and you talk to God. Um, we talked about last week how posture is important. So when you Get home when you're getting ready to spend your intimate, personal time with God. Find a place, especially, I, I live alone, so it's, it's easy for me. But those of us who have families at home with us and things like that, find a place that's your personal, quiet place, where it can just be you and God. You don't have to feel the need or the pressure that everybody's watching, everyone's listening. It's just you and God, so you can just be your own personal self, your own real self. And then it says, just be there as simply and honestly as you can, ma can manage. Just keep it simple. Just pour out to God your heart. Again, we, we know that God already knows everything. But just pour out and just get personal with, it, with God and keep it simple for now. For those of us, um, this is just a, this is your, your pathway to prayer, uh, for lack of a better word. If you're struggling with knowing how to pray, this is just to show you. It's so, make it simple. Keep it simple. As we go further into the lesson, I, I'll show you how even more simple it can be. But this is just setting the mold for knowing how to pray for those who struggle with that. And I have some of my young people watching who we always talk about. And I always say, you know, ask them to pray. And they're always like, Miss Geraldine, I'm scared. So I really want them to hear tonight. That we've all been in a place of being nervous. But we're talking to God. And we need to understand that we don't have to put on a show for God. We don't have to have a, a fancy dialogue with God. And I want everyone to fully understand that. Especially uh, my young people who are watching tonight. Um, but it says, the focus will shift from you to God. And you will begin to sense his grace. The folk, when you get personal and you make it about you and God and your communication with God, 
it's going to come. He's going to start, the word is going to come. <laughs> Just like teaching. You know what I mean? When, when we move, when I move myself out of the way, when I uh, uh, take a deep breath and don't talk as fast as I'm talking out, <laughs> but when I move myself out of the way, God starts to speak through me. <clears throat> Same with um, Reverend Lonnie, our bishop. When we, when, when any leader, any church, not just here, any leader, any church, anywhere, when we remove ourselves and the, the, the focus becomes on God, so God, it'll shift from you to God. Because now you you opened up, you, you relaxed, you got your quiet place, and you opened up, and now you're just talking to God. And he's allowing, and he's helping you to pour everything out to him. And so it says, and it says you'll be in, it says the focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense his grace. You'll be able to feel, you'll be able to feel his presence. It'll, it'll, it'll be like a load is being lifted because you've become personal with it. You've kept it simple, you've been honest, and you're just talking to God, and you'll start feeling his presence. And this says, this is where the intimidation comes in. If we don't keep our focus, it says the world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. It says they are full of formulas and programs and advice, heavenly techniques for getting what you want from God. It says the world is full of so-called prayer warriors and who are prayer ignorant, which means that sometimes it has been made in some uh, avenues of people who are prayer warriors in some places, um, and I have not experienced it personally a lot, but it's saying here in the, in the Bible is that they are prayer ignorant because it's been made out that you have to have all these uh, formulas and programs and advice and techniques on how to communicate with God, and that's not true. And so that's what this is telling you. Some of the people that we are thinking are prayer warriors and that we're feeling like, that, that's the way I got to pray. Well, that's how I got to pray. That's how I got to sound. They, the Bible says they are some of them. They are prayer ignorant because it does not take a formula. It does not take a technique. It does not take certain people telling you how to pray. Like me, I'm, I'm sharing with you that it's simple to just talk to God. God will elevate you to, we have some prayer, I know a lot of prayer warriors, right? I know a lot of intercessors, I know a lot, of, and, I, and God has taken them from here to where they are now, from simplicity of prayer to being able to just flow and to know what other people need are through prayer being, by being led and guided by the Holy Spirit. So I am not speaking down on prayer warriors, I'm saying that the Bible says that some, the world the world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. You don't have to have a technique. We're talking to God who already knows everything. We can't scam him into a blessing or we can't... Uh, uh, charismatically talk him into doing something for us. Um, we can't um, be uh, charismatic and think that we're going to be able to talk to God, smooth him over and get what we want out of him like we do our parents or like some people may do their spouses or things like that. That's not how God works. So therefore, in your prayer life, recognize you don't have to do all those things. Okay? Some of the most effective prayers that have blessed me have been simple so I want you to understand that God knows everything. And so therefore, just talk to him. Just have a conversation with him. Um, don't fall for that. It says don't fall for that nonsense. Right. Don't be afraid to pray. Don't be intimidated. Don't come to a church and you hear maybe, for example, a minister or someone praying who's been praying in church 100 years. I guess they should know how to pray all a certain type of way. But if you are just a new, a babe in Christ, or not even a babe in Christ, I've been in church 30 years, and I have not been able to stand up and do powerful prayers and all of that to the recent years. And it's still between me and God. God's the one that determines how powerful my prayer was, because he's listening to my heart to begin with. And so with that being said, don't be 
uh, bound by feeling like you have to pray a certain type of way. That if you don't do it this way, God not hearing you. That's not true. And it says, this is your father you are dealing with. <laughs> and he knows you better than what you, well, let me read that again. This is your father you are dealing with. And he knows better than you what you need. And I just said that. This is God that we're dealing with, right? So he already knows what you need before you ask for it to begin with. So therefore, to do this big production of prayer for a God who already knows everything, who are you doing it for? Who are you trying, whose attention are you really trying to get? Are you just trying to get your glory and your reward from the people listening? Because God is kind of tuning it out. You have, you have to have a sincere prayer from your heart. That's what God is listening to, and that only. And so it's saying, it's saying, who are you doing all this for? Because God knows better than you what you need before you even ask for it. He knows exactly what I need before I ask for it, every time. And the same goes for you. He knows what we need before we ask for it. Okay? It says, with a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply like this. And it's saying, with a God, with, with a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply. With a God who knows everything, he already knows what you need. He already knows what you're going to ask for. He already knows your heart's desires. So with a God like that who knows everything, who is omnipresent, everywhere at the same time, right? He see all, he know all. So therefore, he knows everything. So with a God like this, you can pray very simply. So what is the very simple prayer that we can pray? The Lord's Prayer. Um, when you think about the Lord's Prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, you, you are encompassing everything in that one prayer. That's why it was given to us as the model prayer. Everything you need to talk to God about is in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You're, you're praising God, you're thanking God, you're acknowledging who he is, right? Our kingdom. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And then, so everything that you're asking God for, everything that you need from God, you can simply ask for it in the model prayer. Because it includes, it encompasses every single aspect of what we need to do in order to communicate, in order to get a prayer across to God. That's why it was given to us as a model prayer. So what I'm saying is when you're praying, use the Lord's um, prayer um, as your model prayer and then add to it. And then add to it some more. And before you know it, you're praying this, um, just this big old theatrical prayer, if you would. Because now you've already asked God, you've, you've said the model prayer, you've asked him, You've asked him to forgive you. you. You're saying, Lord, forgive my trespasses as, as I forgive those who trespass against me. Don't leave that part out of the prayer. So you ask God to forgive you. You tell him you're going to forgive others. Everything is included right there in the Lord's Prayer. And if you have to end your prayer with God until you, until you build up a stronger prayer vocabulary, if there's really a such thing, then you are able to say amen and know that you've included everything that you need to include in communicating with God. This prayer was not written or designed for no reason, right? And then you'll find yourself being able to say, before you even get to amen, you'll be able to start, start talking to God. And then you need to be able to recognize in, in the beginning of a prayer, there should be just, just some tips. You want to start off by just thanking God and telling him how good he is, how marvelous he is, how wonderful he is. You want to just thank him for all that he's done. You know, tell him how, how amazing he is. You know, lift him up and praise him. Then you also want to go from there to say, Lord, please forgive me of my sins. Asking God to forgive you for anything that you, you know, just confess your sins, ask for forgiveness. And then you want to go on and ask God to bless others, do something for somebody else, heal somebody else, deliver somebody else. You know, and it's all that is really that simple. It's not a, a big strategy to it. Then you start asking God to do things for you. And then you, after you get done 
same with all that? Say amen. Because God already knows. And then he's going to lead you. And he's going to strengthen you up. Because what you've done is that you, you're building what we talk about all the time, a relationship. In order to have a successful relationship with your, your mate, your children, or your co-workers, anyone, you have to communicate. Right? So with that being said, that's all prayer is. It's just straight communication between you and God. And when you, the more you uh, have that type of communication, guess what? The closer you get to Christ, the, the more he'll start giving you words to say. The most powerful thing that happens in my life every day is prayer at the 8 a.m. time in the morning on our church prayer line. I pray outside of the prayer line. That morning prayer, when you hear different ones just praying, and some are just, some people just get on the prayer line and say, Lord, I thank you. Uh, Bishop gave us a lesson, uh, a message. It's been about three years now. He said, thank you is the password. So we have one member before on our church who get on the prayer line every day. She said, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> she just gives, she just, that's the password. Thank you is the password. So sometimes you might just want to get into a prayer mode with God and just say thank you. Right? But uh, um, Pastor Craig, Bishop London, Reverend Pender, all growing up, they always said, thank you makes room for more. That's a prayer. Right? When you reflect and you start thanking God for all he's done, that's a prayer. Lord, I thank you. It's a prayer. Lord, forgive me. It's a prayer. Lord, you are so amazing. You are so awesome. Lord, I thank you for all you've done. Those are prayers. It's nowhere that said that you can only communicate with God in these big words and these long phrases and super long prayers. Are they good? Yes. So please, I don't want anyone who may listen to this that has a strong um large vocabulary prayer in life, there's, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But for those who are beginning to try to build a strong prayer life for God, it's saying there is prayer in simplicity. You can pray with simplicity and God is going to hear you the same because he's only basing your prayers upon your heart to begin with. And I don't want us to be, continue to be afraid to pray. Um, I pray, right now I have a couple of assignments that I'm, I'm praying and I'm asking God to take care of. The, and I, like I shared with you guys last week, the only thing I'm asking for myself right now is that God be a mind regulator for me because that's where my my struggle becomes with my, um, my, with my job. So I have to ask God to keep my mind all day, every day. But other than that, I'm asking God to do something for specific people in my life that I want to God to do, I want, I want God to heal them, and I want God to bless them. And so I know God will take care of me because I'm being selfless right now. Lord, keep my mind. Yes, I do say that. But then I'm, the rest of my prayer is, Lord, do this for that person. Lord, please. And I'm asking him to do this for them for his name's sake. <laughs> right? And that's what I'll get on, Lord. But I want, Lord, heal my loved ones for your name's sake. So that somebody can see that you are a true and living, real and living God. That's my prayer. Heal my cousin so that the, the, if there's any non-believers, they can see that there, you are a true and living God and you are a healer. Right? So then after it's all said and done, then the different ones that I'm praying for, they'll have a testimony that when I could not pray for myself, God lifted me. Somebody else prayed for me. And you can do that for somebody without it being deep, without it being hard, without being afraid. You can just simply go to God and say, Lord, thank you. And Lord, I ask that you will heal such and such or bless or whatever it is that you're praying for. Just that simple. Mm -hmm. Just that simple. Lord, do it. That's a prayer. Right? Because you already know. Remember, you see it. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply because he knows better than you what you're dealing with. So when you say, Lord, do it, guess what? He already knows what you want him to do. He just wants you to ask him. Right? And then even in our prayer life, we got to remember that if God does not answer our prayers the way that we want him to answer them, it does not mean that he did not hear us. It's also based upon what is his will. 
right? So don't be afraid, because sometimes that can be another fear in praying. Well, I've been asking God to do this for me, um, he didn't do it. You know, I, I, I asked God to heal my daddy. I said, God, mm -mm. <laughs> heal. And when he did, I was broken. But then I had, I was broken. I knew for a fact God was going to heal my daddy. Well, nothing nobody could tell me my, that God wasn't going to heal my daddy. But it took me to get stronger in my prayer and then for me to have a seek consultation with my bishop and other ministers who said, sometimes because God, God did heal your daddy, he just didn't heal him the way you wanted him to be healed. He healed him the way he, God did it was according to his will. And after I looked at it, and I thought about my daddy's life, I said, yes, thank you, Lord. But it took time. That's a whole other story. I'm not going to sit here like, I was like, oh, okay, I got it. No, it took a minute for me to get that one. But I recognize that God may not answer our prayers the way we want him to, but it does not mean that he's not hearing our prayers. I was speaking with my auntie, and, um, and we were talking about it. And my auntie said, and she said, I just trust God that whatever his will is going to be, that's what it's going to be. And we trust in God for healing. But recognizing that God is in control of all things. But all we have to do is communicate with him. You know what I mean? So I really wanted to share that with you all about praying in simplicity. Use the Lord's Prayer as your go-to model prayer if you, if you need to. Because that's what it's put here for. Trust God to, to hear your prayers that are simple and that are pure and that are honest. Because that is what's going to build your prayer life up. And then you will be one of those prayer warriors that people are calling to pray for. As strong as I think my prayer life is, I have some shared call wells with the world and some Salishas and some whole bunch of people. I'll be like, listen, I need you to pray. And Samantha's, I got some friends out there. I'll be like, some Summer, the Mount Tasha's community training, pray for me. Because it, it's not a matter, because sometimes you need other people to pray for you. And guess what? Some of my friends pray hard and vigorous, and some of them are very laid back with their prayers, but God is still hearing them. And I do not want us to be afraid. When Bishop Vaughn was here, she was saying, just talk to him. She, she was offering us prayer. She didn't offer us a technique. She said, just talk to him, because he already knows. And it would change your life forever. And so what I'm saying to you today is, is that prayer will change your life forever. And it does not have to be a certain way. It does not have to be like everybody else. We have Reverend Porter here. And anybody who knows Reverend Porter knows he's going to pray, he's going to pray, and he's going to pray. And he, he leaves nothing unturned. He prays for everything and everybody. And it's a wonderful prayer. I don't pray like Reverend Porter. But God still hear my prayer. Right? So we go to it's some people in, on, on, that I know different churches, they have major prayer words. I mean, that's what they do in their churches all the time. They just, you know, and guess what? It don't mean that God not hearing your prayer because you don't pray like them. God hears us, but we have to be mindful that it's just person. Reverend Lyon has been teaching the series prior, he's on a new series, I think, when he was he taught us for a few weeks. Is it relational? Or is it religious? Relational people communicate with God and talk to God. Religious people put on a show in their prayers. Period. And if, in, in, in order to not get offended by that statement, you will have to say, oh, she's not talking about me because I have a relationship with Christ. So I'm just saying, is it religious or is it relational? Relational means I know I can talk to God driving down the street in regular conversation. I know that I can talk to God on my knees using regular ABC words that I learned in grade school. I know I can talk to God just like that. Then I also know that when God has elevated my prayer life and my vocabulary or whatever, whatever the words are, that at that time I'll be able to pray like that. But right now he's hearing me, right, he's meeting me right where I am. Right? And so that in the same way we have to to meet uh, disciples and make disciples rather, we have to meet them where they are, right? You can't go to somebody who don't know nothing about Jesus or very little about Jesus and start being all deep and extra because you're going to lose them, right? You got to meet them where they are. So therefore, with Christ, Christ is meeting us where we are in our prayer life. Just talk to him because he already know about us 
Amen. And so I wanted to read this, this last thing. And it says, in prayer, there's a connection between what God does and what you do. You can't get forgiveness from God, for instance, without also forgiving others. If you refuse to do your part, you cut yourself off from God's part. I think that I'm going to always, always bring that to our remembrance every time I teach about prayer. Forgiveness has so many of us bound. We, we have a, a, a great um, mind game thing that we play with ourselves, because you're not playing with God, you play with yourselves, of thinking that you are forgiving people and moving on. You have to, right? If you, if you refuse to do your part, God is not going to do his. God is promising to forgive us, but you have to forgive others. It's that if you refuse to do your part, you cut yourself off from God's part. So it's not that God is not going to do his part. Let me rephrase that. You cut yourself off from God's part. Because God promised to forgive us, but you cut yourself off from it when you won't forgive others. And during, during this time, there should be nothing that we should be talking about. I'm not talking about pastors. Let me rephrase that. I'm talking about as people. Because pastors teach as that they're led. But as people, when you're communicating to other people, you should be talking about repentance. And prayer, love, forgiveness. Those are the things that we, as sheep, whatever our leaders, our shepherds are teaching us, we need to take out and share with somebody else. But in that conversation, it should be about love, forgiveness, um, prayer, and repentance. Right? Because you only, we're only created to, we have many purposes that we find as we grow in Christ. But ultimately, we have two purposes. Two. That is to be a blessing and to make disciples. We should be blessing people and we should be making more disciples. That's what we should be doing. And in doing so, you need to be talking about prayer, repentance, forgiveness, love, faith. The, and these are the five things, even though this is week seven, these are the five things that we've been talking about through Bible class. And those are the things you need to even ask God in your simple prayer to help you with. Lord, I need more faith. Lord, I need to know how to love the way you told me to love. Lord, I need to know how to repent the right way because repentance is not remorse. Amen? So I need to learn that. I need to know how to forgive others. And I need to have um, love, forgiveness, faith, peace, forgiveness, repentance. Yeah. So those five things we need to focus on all the time. And by doing that, God will change. It will change your life forever. And through prayer is how you can get better at all those things that I named. Matter of fact, through prayer is the only way that you're going to get better with those things that I just said. You got to ask God to help you wherever you lack, whatever you lack at, wherever your weakness is in those things that I named off today is the only, the only way you're going to get better at it is to ask God to help you through it, to make you be who he will have you to be through prayer. And, and as we go into our spiritual mind treatment, um, one of our prayers that we say every day, Reverend Lyman started it, but I love it, so I stole it. <laughs> Lord, help me to unbecome who I am so that I can become everything you purpose and destined for me to be. Everything you call me to be. Help me not, help me come away from myself so I can be everything you would have me to be. And that, that's a prayer, by the way. A simple prayer. Lord, help me. And say it with conviction and mean it, if you mean if you really mean it. Lord, help me to unbecome who I am, who I'm trying to be, who I want to be. <laughs> and help me to become who you would have me to be. And then God will do that for you, I promise you. Because little by little, I'm becoming less of me and more of him. It's taking a minute, <laughs> but it's happening. And I thank God for it. So I hope... Um, that I was able to encourage somebody with the to know that you don't have to it, it's not you don't have to make prayer hard you really really don't you know even I still get nervous when I pray especially on the space with live stuff because I'm like wow well, my prayer warrior friends I can pray like them no but you know it it, it 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 can be intimidating if you if you operate out of yourself but if I'm just gonna close my eyes and talk to God I don't care what nobody else thinks because I'm talking to God. And I want to 
want you to feel the same way. I'm from, just talk to God. You just want him to hear what you got to say. It don't matter what nobody else think of you. Amen. So, New Jerusalem, let's do our spiritual mind treatment. The words that I speak are my law of good, and they will produce the desired results because they are operated on by a power greater than I am. Good alone goes from me, and good alone returns to me. This word is for me. Everything I say is for me and about me. There is one life, and that life is God. That life is perfect, and that life is my life right now. My body is manifested with the living spirit. It is created and sustained by the one presence and the one power. That power is flowing in and through me right now. Animated every organ and every function of my physical being. There is no congestion, no confusion, and no inaction. There is perfect circulation, perfect assimilation, perfect elimination, and perfect action. I am one. With the, and look at yourself and say, I am one. Geraldine is one with the infinite rhythm of life, which flows through me in love, harmony, and peace. There is no fear, no doubt, and no uncertainty in my mind. I am letting that life, which is perfect, control me and flow through me right now. I am a master. God made me a master. Nothing outside of me will I allow to master that power inside of me. And I'm just going to stop it. What, what am I saying when I say, I will let not, no fear, no doubt, no what the doctors say, what the prognosis is, is, is facts over faith. I will let nothing outside of me allow, what I allow to master that power that's inside of me, that God power that's inside of me. It is done. It is complete because of this every day in every way. I am richer and richer and richer. I now express life. Eternal life is mine right now. Spiritual affirmation. No state except announce. Father God, I want to come to you right now, Lord, just to say thank you, oh God. Lord, we just thank you for being so good, so merciful, and so kind, oh God. We thank you for keeping us, Lord. We thank you for looking beyond our faults and supplying our needs, oh God. We just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, oh God. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you're going to do. We thank you for every way that you made. We thank you for every door that you opened, Lord. We thank you for every door that you closed that didn't need to be opened in our lives, oh God. We just say thank you, oh God. Now, Lord, I come to you right now, first of all, Lord, asking that you would touch all of our grieving families okay, on, on today, oh God. Touch um, Gloria Ridgeway as we lay Mother Ridgeway to rest today, oh God. And all of our members who are grieving the loss of their loved ones, oh God, continue to be a company keeper, oh God, and continue to keep them. And then, Lord, I ask that you would look on our sick and shutting in the New Jerusalem and everywhere, oh God. Look on Edna Hunter, oh God. And look on Denise Bailey, oh God. Look on Linda Davis, oh God. Look on all of our, our, our family members who are not well, oh God. We just trust you for their healing, oh God. Then, Lord, I ask that you would look on my cousin, oh God. I ask that you would touch her from the top of her head to the sole of her feet, oh God. We thank you for every movement. Lord, we thank you for every progression in her, her coming back around, oh God. We you know you're able, so we say thank you, oh God. Then, Lord, I ask that you would look on my family, look on my aunts, and look on her children and, and her siblings, oh God. Keep them encouraged and keep them strong, oh God. And then, Lord, I ask that for every family everywhere that has a loved one that they're concerned about, they're praying about, God, we trust you. We know that you're able. We know that you're capable to do anything and everything but fail, oh God. And we know that you will bless and heal according to our faith, oh God. So our faith is strong that you are a healer. And we believe in you and we trust in you in you for all things, oh God. Look on our bishop, oh God. Continue to bless him and to keep him, to keep him safe and covered, oh God. Thank you for his word and his ministry, oh God. Thank you for him. Seven weeks of re a two-week revival turned into seven weeks and 22 days so far, oh God. We just say thank you for the word, oh God. Continue to give him a word to give to us, oh God. And then, Lord, I ask that you would look on every pastor, every church door, open in your name, that you will bless them and bless their ministries, oh God. And then, Lord, I ask that you would look on Reverend Lyman. Thank you for being here with me and blessing him, keep him and his family and his children and everything, oh God. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you, I thank you. Thank you for showing us that we can just talk to you just how I'm talking to you now, oh God. No special words, just me and you, oh God. And Lord, I'm saying thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Now, Lord, I ask that you would give me track. Lord, I ask that you would look on our sister, Pastor. I'm sorry, oh God. Bless and keep her and continue to heal her and, and bring her closer to you, oh God. Thank you for what you're doing in her life and what you're doing in her body, oh God. And Ebony, thank you for Ebony and Michelle and Maria, oh God. Thank you for them all. Thank you for being their protectors and their healers. And then, Lord, I do ask that you would look on every last one of our mothers. Keep them safe and keep them covered in their homes, oh God. And Lord, I thank you for hearing my prayer tonight. I ask that you would give me traveling mercies and that you would get me home safely and bring me back to this, bring us back to this place um, on tomorrow evening for worship with our bishop, oh God. Through Facebook, oh God, and social distancing, oh God, we ask that you would bring us together that we can worship again tomorrow at the 6.30 hour. Lord, we thank you and we honor you. These are all things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.